by the age of 17, Muhammad, an orphan boy, was recognized as the strongest general. But after saving his country from a rebellion, the ones in power thought he was becoming too powerful and decided to throw him away. Our story begins when Mamut was still a little boy returning home at night. He finds his village on fire and tries his best to save his mother, but sees her last breath, and an old man appears behind him. The old man introduces himself as Halil, a general for the Turkey I Empire. He apologizes for not being able to save his tribe or mother from being attacked in their war against the Balt Rhyme Empire, and takes in Mamut as his foster son. Twelve years later, we find Mamut, who just became the youngest general in Turkey Eye's history fighting a robber. The robber tries to slash Mamut with his sword, but he simply dodges it and uses his eagle companion, Iskender, to break the thief's arm. Mamut goes to the council where they reveal that a minister from the Balt Rain Empire was murdered. With all evidence pointing to Turkey Eye, the Empire requests Turkey Eye to give them a general as a space goat or they will start a war just like twelve years ago. Mamut wants to keep peace and avoid another war, so he investigates the arrows that killed the minister. He figures those arrows were made by the Balt Rain Empire, and goes out to seek his foster father, General Hallel, who volunteered to be the space goat. After revealing the truth, they manage to capture the assassin team sent by Prime Minister Louis from Balt Rain, the instigator of the conspiracy. They reach Balt Rain and reveal the truth to its emperor, forcing the empire to end the conflict without consequences. But Louis couldn't accept his failure and decided to manipulate a tribe to take over the city of Hisar. Mamut gets back to the council just to find out that the city of Hisar is rebelling against the empire. They further find out that Ibrahim, Mamut's friend, he's the one leading the rebellion with the help of a tribe. Therefore, General Zaganos is the one responsible to solve the conflict with a huge army. Mamun and his friend, Shara, sneak out and go to Hisar to investigate the situation. In Balt Rain, Louis tries to convince the Emperor to send troops to Hisar with the pretense to safeguard the people, which will allow them to claim Hisar as their new territory. In Hisar, Mamut finds out that everyone is being held hostage in an oil-soaked tent, forcing Ibrahim to obey Araba tribe and the Rod Orm Empire agent's orders. Mamut stands up and tells everyone about the Empire's plot, expecting it to bait the Rod Orm leader Colbert into a fight and leads him to an alley. Colbert ultimately gets the upper hand, as he threatens to blow a whistle that will inform his men to burn down the Hisar tent. The Araba tribe questions Alina, a Rod Orm agent, about what's going on in Mamut's words, but she threatens to burn the hostages and make them take the blame. Colbert keeps the whistle in his mouth as he beats Mamut. Mamut takes the beating as waits for the right timing. Shara cuts the ropes holding the cloth of the tent and Iskender with a large flock of eagles lifts the tent cover up and frees the hostages. Ibrahim takes advantage of Mamut's achievement and contacts Zaganos, who's waiting with his army nearby, asking for help to retake the city. Colbert sees the event from the alleyway. Mamut uses it as a distraction to get up and prepare for his attack. He uses Iskender to help him get his sword and attacks Colbert. After a quick exchange of blows, Mamut combines his attack with Iskender to strangle Colbert to his demise. Zaganos manages to get the city back, and they return to the council. However, despite his achievement, Mamut's status as general is removed, because he chose to recklessly save his friend, instead of thinking about his duties as general. He decides to go on a journey, to meet new people, know new places and find the true meaning of becoming a general. He meets Zaganos at night, who gives him a charm. That charm will enable him to contact Zaganos' spies spread around the world, revealing that he already knew about Hisar's rebellion before it even started, and that he's preparing for an inevitable war. Mamut's journey begins with him filled with nightmares. He sees his village being destroyed, and another version of himself attacking him, with the thoughts of being demoted from a general. He stops at his rebuilt hometown and uses Zaganos' charm to contact a spy. He meets Barbaros who explains how the spy network works and that some spies have been murdered by Rod Orm on Louis orders. He then points Mama to meet the spy network chief Suleiman. He meets Suleiman who explains his past but they get a signal from Barbaros, who is being attacked by some Red Orm agents led by a leaner. Mamut and Suleiman arrive in time to help and save him. Mamut tries to take down the agents alone using eagles. Unfortunately, they know of his tricks and the woman throws a mix of blood on him so the eagles will attack Mamut and not her. Suleiman saves the young man with his own eagles, allowing them to try and counterattack. But Mamut acts alone once again, forcing the group to retreat from the Rod Orm. Suleiman slaps him for acting alone without thinking of his allies. The Rod Orm starts to light the village on fire, drawing the group out. Together, they manage to defeat two of the agents by taking away their swords in a coordinated counterattack. 
but Alina manages to flee. Before departing, Suli urges Mama to learn more about the world and then get his general position back. With his motivation back, Mama decides to board a ship and visit Phoenicia. Upon reaching, he uses the charm to meet the other spy, Kairos, who is actually sitting by his side. Kairos explains Phoenicia already knew he arrived and will contact him because there's an envoy from Balt Rain on a mission. The Phoenicians approach him and take him to Constantinos, the one who rules the city. Upon request, Mamet sits on the Senate where they discuss if they should allow Balt Rain's request to use Phoenicia's port for their fleet, as it can be an excuse to invade their city and country and create a war. The Phoenicians use Mamet as an excuse to claim Turkey I is supporting them in war and decide to engage in a siege against the Balt Rain. After several days of holding the empire, Phoenicia starts to get worried that they will lose unless their ally nation Benedict sends them reinforcements. Mamut understands that if Balt Rain manages to overtake the city, then they will have a free pass to attack Turkey. And so he decides to set out on a new journey to Benedict with Kairos to stop any possible large-scale war. Balt Rain then decides to use some soldiers as bait. They claim to surrender and ask for asylum. Phoenicia takes pity on them and decides to open their gates, and Balt Rain takes advantage and enters the city gates. Mamut, who was preparing to set sail away, decides to ram against the ship that entered the harbor, and uses Iskander to carry a bag of nails to let them rain on the enemy crew. Mamut and his crew board the enemy ship and capture everyone, until Glalat, the Empire's envoy appears and attacks Mamut. They exchange several blows, but Mamut starts to get overpowered after getting hit on his chest. Glalat grabs him in the air and throws him to the ground. He then plunges to stab Mamut but he misses the attack. Mamut gets up and tries to parry more attacks, but gets kicked away. Kairos appears and manages to capture Gladat, but he suddenly frees himself and attacks Mamut again, who starts to feel the temperature rising. He looks back and his eyes start to shake when he sees Phoenicia covered in flames. Leliderick from the Empire managed to infiltrate the city and set it on fire. Lala takes advantage of everyone's shock and flees away. Without any other option, Phoenicia surrenders their city to Balt Rain, and Kairos is forced to take Mamut out of the city. The Turkey Stratocracy and its vassal nations meet a few days after Foink's fall to vote on making war preparations against Balt Rain. However, the Sultans vote against creating a federation. Zaganos gets angry and wonders if they should remove the Sultans. Mamut, accompanied by Kairos and Abiriga, a new companion from Venedic arrive at the Mizrak Stratocracy, a vassal state from Turkey. They visit the water shrine to find out why there's a weapons dealer around the town but it's closed. They manage to get inside and meet Bayezid, another spy from Zaganos' network, and his niece Ice, who's also the daughter of a Sultan. Bayezid tells Mamut about the meeting and their decision, despite being against his brother's decision. He manages to arrange Mamut an audience with the Mizrak Sultan, where Mamut asks about his decision. Sultan Balaban tries to recruit Mamut to join his side, but he rejects it. He expresses his hate toward his brother and daughter for being against his decisions, and orders to burn down the water shrine with them inside. Mamut manages to send a message to Zaganos about Balaban starting a civil war, and Zaganos manages to convince the general's council to secretly get rid of the sultans. After watching Balaban's cruelness, Mamut and his companions follow him to his palace, but they try to flee at night through an underground tunnel. At the same moment, Balaban meets Alina from the Red Orm, revealing that he's conspiring with the Empire against Turkai. Mamut and his companions finally exit the tunnel and find Alina and her agents waiting for them. Mamut quickly realizes that the Empire is behind the vassal state's opposition to Turkey. I. They start to fight, with Mamut rushing to slash her, but she dodges. The other two agents try to deal with him, but combining his attacks with Iskender, he manages to slash their lives out of their body. He moves toward Alina, cuts her hand off, and pushes her against the floor. He tries to slice her neck, but she manages to hold the blade with her hand. She distracts him stating that Turkai is already dead and frees herself, forcing them to retreat as Balaban's army leaves the castle to capture them. They are rescued by Suleiman, Bayezid, and Ice, who are still alive, as they escape the fire. Suleiman then gives Mamut his new orders from Zaganos, appointing him as the one who will end the Sultan's lives and find replacements support the Federation. The group divides into two and Mamut goes to Kilik. Orhan takes them to his father, but the Sultan arrests them right away. A few hours later, Selim uses a hidden passage to visit them. He tells he was forced to join forces with Balaban and Balt Rain because his state is small and could be destroyed. Mamut then devises a plan to hold a marriage ceremony between Orhan and Ice and appoint Orhan as the new Sultan. 
and invite every sultan to the ceremony, where Mamut will assassinate every sultan plotting against Turkai. Meanwhile, Suleiman and Bayezid who went to Biki get captured by Ismail, who wants to join their cause, because Biki is constructing a trade route with the empire. He explains that he thinks the road project is harmful and that he supports Biki's cooperation with Turkai. The Council of Turkai sends some representative generals to represent them at the wedding. But one of the generals, Saruka, is against the assassination plot. And so, that idiot decides to go to Mizrak and tell Balaban everything. After finding out about the idiot's betrayal, Zaganos uses the council to send their armies to the other vassal states and capture their capitals while the sultans are partying. The wedding day arrives and all sultans come to Kilik with their armies. Selim notices how unmatched his state is and decides to change the plan. It's time to capture Ice, Mamut and company and give them to Balaban. He attempts to kill Ice, but Orhan steps up and kills his father, who gives him encouraging words as his last words, what da? As Kilik's new sultan, Orhan informs his soldiers and commands them to free Mamut and work with him to protect the city against Balaban and his troops. Mamut explains the general plot to them. Turkai's army is away taking everything in their path, and so, they get the best part of the job, suicide squad style. They have to deal with Balaban's army head on. Balaban, who killed General Saruka, told he he was an idiot and heads to the front lines, but decides to use the same number of men as Mamut's army to have an honorable battle. Yes, hello idiot number two. The battle begins, with Mamut's major strategy level in action. He makes his horsemen ride with some tree branches, scaring the enemy horses away, enabling his army to slash some of the enemies right away. Arrows start raining from the sky, almost turning into night. They retreat and drag their branches on the floor, making the dust fly into the air. The enemies are dumber than a stick and continue to move forward, despite seeing nothing ahead of them. The dust is just Mamut's signal for the next step. On the other side, his peloton starts to retreat, making the enemy chase them. Surprise, they're dead after being pierced by the spearmen who are hiding on the ground. The third stage beings with the third peloton also retreating, while horsemen attack Balaban's army who are recklessly chasing them away. When the dust settles down, all the sultan can see is the majority of his personal army enjoying their vacation to the afterlife. In a burst of rage, the sultan manages to revitalize his troops' morale up and chase Mamut and his peloton again to end in a ravine, where they start to get shot by his brother Bayezid. They drop large rocks to block their escape, forcing Balaban's army to use their shields in a turtle formation to escape. But another surprise, bullets don't care about shields, and his brother starts shooting them, making his men go down. In the end, the Sultan gets several shots in his body and finally one on his head, ending the rebellion and saving the country. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.